Hi, friends, and welcome to 15241 Today Talk. Jim Render and I are extremely pleased to uh, have a dear friend join us on the broadcast today, Don Rebel. Um, I don't mean to embarrass you, but I'll say this anyways, whether it embarrasses you or not. I've been announcing high school football for 11 years. I've become a part of the uh, Don Rebel team. Uh, I'm most appreciative that you've asked me to, to do it. And you deserve a lot of credit for what you've done putting this network together to cover high school sports. Congratulations. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And, and, and what's funny is um, that when I, he has said those words to me in private. He has said them publicly. He has said them when I'm not even around in interviews. And it's so humbling because, you know, part of the reason I'm here is – because I grew up listening to Lanny, and 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 he sort of drove me, helped drive me in the direction I wanted to go. So it's sort of very strange, but I, I greatly appreciate it. I, I cherish our friendship, and I know you spent a good bit of time with with this gentleman as well, Uncle Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell that story that you had. <laughs> I have a couple of them, but I, I will not. I will respect the host. <laughs> How was it that you decided you wanted to be a broadcaster? Oh, you know, I, I and I, I've been so blessed. I, I thank the good Lord that um, he, he, I have always had a love for sports, like most kids growing up. Um, and yet, I, you know, I had um, some health issues, asthma when I was young, so I, while my older brother was a very good athlete, not so much here. So I was more of a spectator than a player uh, growing up. And it started, I don't know, it started very young. I remember my older brother, he's two years older than me, and him and his buddies would go play wiffle ball. And I would go up to a little makeshift field we had in the neighborhood every day, hoping they didn't have enough players and I could you know, get the call. More times than not, they wanted no parts of me playing so I would climb this tree and start announcing the games and they were my toughest critics because you know if I said something they didn't like I, you know the little rocks would be uh, my, <laughs> flying my way <laughs> so it was very dangerous in the early days but it's just something I've I know there's a lot of folks who go through life not knowing what they want to do career-wise and and that's something I wanted to do at, the, at a very young age. You guys have some similarities in that regard. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we do. Yeah, so we certainly do. And you uh, and I, by the way, uh, I'm an asthmatic, so I didn't realize we had that in Yeah, there. it's... Uh, you must have been worse than me. You know what? But, um, did you have it when you were young? That's when I really had it. But, uh, you know, most days I, I could play, you know, I mean. Back then, and again, you're a little older than me, but I, I remember, and I tell, because my grandson's uh, unfortunately asthmatic as well, and, um, you know, I, 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 they have all kind of, the, you know, they have the machines now and the puffers, and we, you know, I didn't, I had to take a little pill and wait an hour for it to start to kick in. I, I remember that, that there really wasn't that instant, um, you know, medicine that, that they have nowadays, so. I spent five days in the Cleveland Clinic Ooh. being tested for all the. This was in the late '40s, early '50s, yeah. and um, the one thing I really remember, I sat on this table, and I had to reach out and put my arms around the nurse, and then there was a nurse here and a nurse here, and I had. 500 shots in one week they go right arm left arm back <laughs> and you were how old five i think wow yeah. and you remember that well i remember getting to yeah. put my arms around <laughs> the nurse <laughs> well, I what was the, the shots what was the genesis of the idea to create a network to cover high school sports well, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because I always, when I first started, I started out of college at this small station in McKeesport that's no longer there. And we did mostly 
they were doing high school sports, and I really never followed high school sports before that. And um, I got involved, obviously, and they, you know, were doing just mostly McKeesport, East Allegheny, you know, South Allegheny, those schools in that general area. And I always, and I had this vision of, it's when the NFL started doing more studio shows, and, and I came up with the idea of doing a scoreboard show, and I said, you know, there's people around here that are interested in more than just four schools, and we should sort of broaden our horizons a little bit, and I was able to convince the powers that be to sort of expand beyond our listening capacity, and Upper St. Clair and some of the South Hill schools were, were, were some of the schools we started doing more often, and... Um, so, you know, again, you were always limited by that AM signal. And I thought, man, it would be nice to have a network of stations where you could hear, you know, this station here, this station here, because high school football specifically dominates, um, Friday nights on the radio in Southwestern Pennsylvania. And so when this, you know, the whole internet thing came, you know, I wasn't in tune. I'm not technically sound or anything like that, but um, a gentleman I was working with at the time sort of thought, well, if we could stream our games on the internet, audio, then anybody could listen. And I thought, oh man, that'd be fantastic. So we did it for a year or two with this internet company that we then talked to sort of doing what I had just mentioned before, putting, trying to get all these radio stations to stream through them. And, you know, then people can go on and listen to this game and Butler and listen to this game and Latrobe and listen to this game and Beaver Falls sitting there in their homes in Green Tree and um, not having to worry about, you know, I can't get that station where I live. And thus, a year later, the... The Nauticom Sports Network was formed in 1999, the fall of 99. That became, uh, that they then sold to Management Science Associates and the MSA Sports Network. And now, of course, uh, the Trib Live High School Sports Network for four years now. And let's explain to people that now on a Friday night with the High School Sports Network, the Trib Live High School Sports Network, you've got these local stations, uh, Washington, Beaver mm -hmm. Falls, Latrobe, Butler, you've got all these local stations that are doing their game, but they're part of the network. And then you're sending out, what, uh, 15, 20 announcing teams to cover other games. So the network's, in addition to you having a pregame show and a postgame show with all the scores in between there, you've got uh, two dozen, 30 games covered, more than that? It's, it's usually between somewhere between 32, 36 games. Uh, on a Friday night, and now the since we've moved over to Trip Total Media, they've become more video. Um, you know, bringing the video aspect and trying to do more video because that's now you know that's where things are going. People, schools are streaming their games, so we've uh, expanded our our video coverage along along the way. I'm going to ask you about all of that as it relates to COVID-19, but before, but before we do that, what were some of the challenges in the early years or what still are some of the challenges as it relates to you contacting athletic directors, getting permission to be there, talking to coaches, getting information, all your announcers being uh, up to speed? Yeah, it's so much easier now, obviously, <laughs> with uh, email and texting. Um, before, back in the day, it was you had to physically call and get a hold of somebody and notify them. Um, you know, it, it, when you said the challenges early on, you know, I, I, the one thing that I'm, I'm very proud of is the scoreboard show. That was my baby, even going back to the days at WIXZ. Um, I remember I had coaches say that, you know, I, I can't get your station in the house, so I was sitting in the driveway listening to the scoreboard show. My wife thinks I was having some sort of affair or something because I was out there for an hour sitting in my driveway. Um, but my very first, I, you know, I, 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 I contacted all these athletic directors um, and asked them to please call 
um, the radio station with your final score. So I start the scoreboard show. I got two scores, um, and and I'm like, you know, what am I going to do for an hour? Uh, so I started playing this. The, the the format of the station was country music. So I started playing country music songs in between, then running out, getting on the phone, and trying to you know get more scores. But um, you know that's obviously with social media and everything that's become so much easier getting the information and then touching base with those I need to touch base with to let them know that this, these are the games we're broadcasting. Can you please promote, et cetera, et cetera. How, how do you pick, how do you pick which games you're going to do this week or any week? Yeah, that's a good question. We, uh, what I've always done is I have schedules all of our radio stations, they send me their schedules of what games they're doing. And then, you know, we have some schools that also broadcast. So I have all that information, and then I just sort of look at the schedule and sort of, okay, we have, say, nine broadcast teams I'm going to send out that particular week. What are the nine best games that aren't covered? We certainly don't want to send guys to games where a station already is. That doesn't make sense to have two broadcasts. Sometimes that happens, but not um, not with our in-house broadcasters. But So I, I try to pick the best games that aren't being covered by our affiliates or schools. And so because of that, I, I usually do that week to week because you don't want to do it way ahead of time because then a game that you thought was going to be pretty good in week six – doesn't look too good when you get past week five. So it's, that's a weekly thing. I think it's been great what you have done. Uh, back when I was coaching, you know, uh, my niece in Dover, Ohio, would always want to know, is your game going to be on the uh, Internet or however you phrase it yeah. properly. But. Uh, so it's, it, it was great. I think you're, you've really expanded coverage in uh, Western Pennsylvania high school sports. Yeah, you know, it's funny, Jim, because the, the, originally I said the idea was for people here in Western Pennsylvania to enjoy other games that might not be in their, in their listening area. But once we got going with the Internet and streaming and everything, we got feedback from people all over the country, all over the world about, you know, I, I was able to listen to my niece. I was able to listen to my cousin. I was able to listen to my grandson's game. Um, you know, I was listen, able to listen to my alma mater in the big playoff game. I mean, those kind of things, you don't think about that, but then when you get that sort of feedback, you, you sort of sit back and you say, this is pretty good. This is what we're, the service we're offering is, is pretty neat. So then you, if I'm reading this right, you, you gradually, uh, gradually went to Trib Live. Is that a good partnership for you? It's been, <clears throat> a, it's been a great partnership. I mean, um, I mean, my role is a lot different, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I think the the powers that be uh, at Trib Total Media have had a vision for when they purchased the network from Management Science Associates, and um, have been really behind it and uh, supported it. And our growth, not only the numbers but also financially with sponsorship, has shown that this thing's starting to build, and and that's great because uh, that wasn't always the case um, at, at, at MSA. We, I thought, got a little stagnant at times. But, um, you know, they have really welcomed us, and it was a great landing spot for everything we do and what they had done and now what they continue to do. Do you have to uh, sell sponsorships? Anymore? I do not. When I first started at at the radio station, the, the general manager wanted me to, and I said, I am not a salesperson, and I have dodged that bullet. Uh, I mean, I can talk the product, but once that first person says no, I would slink in a corner somewhere <laughs> and think that, oh, my gosh, I'm terrible. But 
I don't. I just don't have that mindset. I think it takes a special person to hear nine no's and yet continue to be driven to get that one yes. Yeah. Um, that certainly is not my makeup, but uh, uh, no, to answer your question. I would be in your camp. Uh, I've often thought, you know, I think I have some abilities in several areas, but asking people for money, mm-hmm. a donation, however, that would not be my strong I'm Very system. uncomfortable, yeah. yeah. Yep, I agree. Those of us who work for the uh, Trib Life High School Sports Network, uh, we have a new slogan this year, best seat in the house. Certainly makes a great deal of sense that that with the restrictions at football games and other sporting events that we now have as a network an opportunity to reach out and, and uh, provide a service to a great deal more people that, that are not able to come to the games because of the coronavirus. Yeah, and, and we've tried to answer the call. I know we've had a lot of requests, and we and we sort of thought this would be the case where schools would say, hey, you know, can you come do our game? And we are somewhat limited as far as equipment and personnel that we can't go out and do um, every game, that's for sure. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm while I'm... I'm it's a big benefit to us as far as clicks on a Friday night when people can't get to the stadium or very limited number of people can get to the stadium to watch their favorite school. That is a huge benefit for us. Um, I still, there's something about a full stadium. There's something about that energy that I think not only the players and coaches feed off of, we as broadcasters, and I think you would agree, Landon. Yeah, I do. We feed off that as well. And I, I tell you who I feel feel really bad for, having talked to several of them over the last you know, few weeks in this whole pandemic era, is the athletic directors. Because they're sort of getting their marching orders from you know, superintendents and principals and whatever. You know, we can't do this or we can't do that. And they sort of have to make those very difficult choices. Okay, here's how many tickets we have. Who gets them? Uh, and I know most of them have said that they've just been taking a beating um, from parents. So I've been trying to tell everyone on the, on the scoreboard show, you know, the, the athletic directors are doing the best they can. Give them a little slack. Uh, I, I said uh, the one week I said, uh, give them a hug. And I was like, oh, no, that might not be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do feel there's some uh, – because everybody – I mean, you know, not only parents and family, but just fans, you know. I mean, there's always that group of fans that no matter who's playing or how good that school is doing, they're there to support. And the fact that, uh, you know, a lot of them just can't – aren't allowed. I, again, it's a, it's a great boost selfishly to our network, but – and others, but I, I, I prefer it to be different. Um, also, I'd like everyone to know that, um, um, and I mentioned earlier how proud I am to be a part of your team. From day one, I've been um, so excited, and, and I, I find it infectious that when, when we've had a chance to get the announcers together, the whole crew together, uh, men and women that uh, are not doing it to raise a lot of money. They're doing it to, because they love mm-hmm. announcing. They love doing high school sports. Um, it's, it's another tribute to you. How, and, and how challenging it could be for you because you need to know on a Friday night, if somebody has another job, from where are they coming? How far can they travel to do that game? You know, that is one of the more difficult things, the, the putting together the building of a schedule. And again, it's a week-to-week thing. But like you said, you have to see, okay, first of all, who's available? Secondly, where are they coming from? Knowing that Friday night traffic is not a whole lot of fun. <laughs> um, and, and, and trying to keep them in their home area, yet trying to get these games that we want broadcast, you know, not having to, you know, switch sway too far off of what we, the games that we want to broadcast. And, um, you know, that's tough. And, and, and the one thing I've tried to do, Lanny, in my time is 
I think a good leader leads by example. So I have, I'm out there making that hour and a half trip to Shenango or, or, or going down to broadcast a game at Maple Town. And, uh, you know, I want, if I'm going to ask somebody else to jump in their car and travel 40, 45, 50 minutes to a game, then I can't sit there and every game I do is 10 minutes from my home. And so I've, I, and in, in doing that, it's been beneficial because I've also been to just, I think, except for one, I think I've been to every school, um, done at least one broadcast at every school and, and getting to a chance to meet different people and see these facilities is something that I now, having done this for as long as I have, appreciate and I'm glad I did it instead of just staying in, say, to, say my neck of the woods, so to speak. Um, w one of the things I also marvel at is on Friday nights when I'm driving away from the game that I've just announced and listening to the scoreboard show, um, you're doing what two and a half hours, mm -hmm. uh, start about maybe nine 30 and, uh, the, the scores start coming in and, and how you you're, you're able to gather that scores, those scores, you have notes about, uh, how many wins they've had in a row, t schools that have come down from one classification to another. I, I don't, it, it's quite remarkable how you handle all of that on a Friday night. You know, I guess because you've done it long enough, it makes it a little easier. I'm sure if somebody, you know, followed in your footsteps um, one day, they'd be like, oh my gosh, I don't know how you do it. But when you do it all the time, the same with you, especially when you were coaching, um, you know, you think, oh my gosh, there's so much that goes into this that I never realized. Um, preparing, that's, I know, something that you preach and, and, and rightly so. Um, you know, having notes. I try to listen to recap, so then if somebody says so-and-so ran for 250 yards, I can mention that later on when I'm running down the scores. Now, because there is so much going on and there are a lot of moving parts, I, I, I will admittedly say I don't, I'm not sitting there intently listening to every recap we have, but um, it, it's, a, it's a juggling act. It's, you know, sometimes you look and the, you have seven people on hold waiting to give reports and you're thinking, okay, these guys are going to give three minute reports. That's 21 minutes. When am I going to try to fit updates in too? So I, I'm cognizant of that. And then there are times where you run down the scores and you look and there's nobody get waiting to give phone lines. So now you gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you know, put your top hat on and entertain. So, um, it, every show is different. And I think that's what makes it somewhat refreshing on, on, on my, my side of things. Okay. I've always, I've always, uh, I don't think it happens as much now, but I always was amazed those years when you'd get somebody calling in and they would do a post game report that was longer than you wanted it to, to be. And it was a 55 to nothing game. Yes. And, uh, and I, and, and I knew I had known from being around you how, it had to drive you crazy and how you deal with that so it doesn't happen again. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I obviously, I, I, I like to bring a little humor to the various things that I do. And you have to be cognizant of, of not offending anybody. Um, but at the same time, you know, you may slide a little comment in there the that you hope is received on the other end is okay. I probably went a little too long, and, uh, you know? Um, so, well, you to, tried to, you the tried point. the positive approach there for a while. You, you, you would ring a bell when a guy, yes. when, a, when a broadcaster if somebody did, did a nice, get a good report, report nice, yeah. concise report. I still have the bell there. Yeah. So I'm still capable. I'm still waiting, Lanny. <laughs> but we have, we have a lot of guys who, who, um, are in and out, and then there are a lot of guys who I think like to hear themselves on radio maybe and go a little, a little longer. The guys in-house I can control. I can say, send them an email and say, you can't do that, you can't do this. Our, our affiliates I, I have less control over, but I try to remind them as well. Because I, I, I just say, put yourself in the listener's you know, um, lap, if you will, and, 
and the, you're listening for scores. And yeah, you want highlights, you want recaps from games, the big games, but you don't need a five minute report on a 55 nothing game. You just don't need that. And so I try to keep things going. It's not always easy. The other night, uh, South Fayette played <clears throat> in my hometown, Dover, Ohio. Now, did, did you get a report from that game? How, how does an out-of-state game work? We did the, the games that we don't have broadcasts of, usually we're just getting the score. If we can get a stat or two, great. But for the most part, those games, and that was not broadcast on the network, um, those games we just, you know, a score will suffice. I mean, um, you know, we don't, again, people are, want – want scores 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 so we we don't want to inundate with recaps of every game well do you do you make arrangements with let, let's say an assistant athletic director for that guy to specifically call you with the score and, and back in the day we used to yes yeah. uh, I think nowadays with you know the Twitter and the social media aspect it's it's a, it is a lot easier to get scores even of games that you don't have broadcast on the network Tell us about your family. Very proud to have uh, three boys. Um, uh, all three are now on with their life's work. My youngest, Carson, just moved out, so we're empty nesters, my wife and I, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but they were they were a treat. Um, they're very different personalities, but all have that sense of humor that I'd like to think I had a part of, um, and they're and they're all doing a great job in their their life's work as the emperor used to say um two of them my old two oldest brandon and ryan are out east in philadelphia uh and my youngest carson who does some stuff for us in the background uh for the network um just moved out graduated from la roche a year ago and is uh and now gainfully employed which is every parent's dream <laughs> But uh, none of your three sons, uh, Carson has been doing some work, but none of them have expressed an interest to be doing play-by-play -play on the no. Trib Live High School Sports Network? No. The two of them, my, my middle son, Ryan, um, is casually into sports. He's not as big into sports as my oldest and youngest. Uh, Brandon did, when he was here in Pittsburgh, help. He's a big hockey fan, so he did some hockey color commentating, no play-by-play, -play, but he did color commentating on hockey for a couple of years. Nothing major, nothing that was driving him. And Carson, same thing. They're big into sports. They both played um, high school sports, but neither one um, wanted to follow in dad's footsteps. And I, you know, I never was big into pushing them in that direction anyway because um, – it's, it's, um, I would know, I, 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 it's a, it's a thing I love to do, but it's a grind and it's, it's a sacrifice, especially early on, uh, when you're not, you know, making a great living in, in, in doing what you love to do. And I think I, I know people that I went to school with and, and even others who got into the business ended up getting out of the business. And we have some with the network that, they still have this passion and love the broadcast, but it wasn't paying the bills. So they went on and did something else successfully, but they still have that fire that burns and they were able to, uh, you know, uh, work well, with us. What was your first job when you got out of college? WIXZ. Uh, it was, so that was a full time. Job. That was, it was part time, uh, for like a month, uh, just Sundays going in, doing a couple newscasts, running the board, um, then I had a chance to get full-time working nights and, um, and then I, like I said, I started getting in more into the sports so that I started doing more of the sports stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was my first full-time gig, uh, right out of college. Um, and, uh, it's been full steam ahead ever since. <laughs> Fabulous job. What's the biggest mistake you've made during a scoreboard show? Ever have one? I mean, outside of the occasional you give the wrong score, you have it flip-flopped, and you're 
you know, I, I know it's happened probably two or three times where you're given a score and you're like, whoa, and you sort of, it's a surprising score and you make a big deal of it. And then 10 minutes later, you're saying, oh, well, I apologize because the score think, was actually reversed. I think I was listening to one of those <laughs> one night. And I thought, that's not that right. Yeah, score. no. Uh, and so. Well, a number of scores, when they pop up, you must, you must look at them and say, wait a minute, that can't be right. Well, or it, it's funny because um, I had, uh, I still do that. This year, you know, when the, the scores come into me, and usually it's when somebody's given a recap, and then I'll mark them on my big sheet. And I'll look at a score and I'll say, that doesn't seem right. And I'll ask the person, can you double check this? So, you know, you get burned a couple of times. You sort of learn, hey, you know, maybe we should double check this. But, um, um, you know, that's the, that's the probably the, uh, as far as mistakes, that's the only thing that pops to mind. I know one of the more humorous events during the scoreboard show. I don't know if you know this story. You may have heard it. Uh, our late colleague, Mark Shoss, he would, um, he did a lot of games up in Lawrence County. That's where he lived. And he, uh, was coming home from a game. Didn't want to do it in the stadium. Never did a report in the stadium. So he would be coming home from a game and he would pull off into a parking lot. Once he said, okay, you know, I'll call in my report. He always said he was listening and he thought, I would wait until there's like, you know, you didn't have any recaps for a while. Then I knew the phone lines were empty. So this one time he pulls over and he starts into this report and you can sort of tell he's somewhat distracted. <laughs> so he's doing this report and all of a sudden he stops and you can hear him like almost put his cell phone, turn it away and say, I'm on the air. I'm on the air. What, what happened was a police officer had pulled behind him thinking that he there was something wrong and the police officer came over, told him to wind his window down and Mark was just ignoring him. He <laughs> continuing his recap and then finally the officer got persistent and started knocking, banging on the window and that's when Mark was trying to explain to him, I'm on the air. You hear then Mark put the window down and you hear his conversation with the officer. <laughs> And I didn't know whether to cut it or whatever. And I thought, oh, this is pretty interesting. I want to yeah, see what yeah. happens. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so we waited, and he ended up finishing his report in handcuffs. No, that's not. <laughs> but uh, that was one of the more uh, interesting recaps, that's for sure. Well, as I've said a number of times, you, you do a fabulous job, and, and uh, I certainly hope that everybody associated with high school sports uh, parents, teachers, athletic directors, superintendents appreciate. Coaches. Coaches, yes. Appreciate the we job. We appreciate that, you. Uh, yeah, that you're doing. Thanks, Don, for being with us today. I appreciate it, Lanny and Jim. It's a pleasure. You guys are, hold a special place in my heart, and I, I appreciate you guys inviting me. Don Rebel joining us, the uh, guy that created the High School Sports Network and working very closely with Justin Labar and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Thank you for joining us. For 15241 Today Talk, Glenn Ward, our producer-director, Linda Danzinski, is our coordinating producer.